Okay, so it's two o'clock now, so I will officially start this um, webinar on Ethiopia. Um, but many of you may know that I am a, a huge fan of Ethiopia. We've been working very closely with Kibran Tours and Aspa for about, um, about 11 years now. Um, and um, sadly, over the last few years, we had to put our partnership on hold due to the fact that Ethiopia, like the rest of the world, were encountering a difficult time in terms of COVID. And then obviously Ethiopia had slightly more challenging times politically. But I'm really, really excited to, to say that Small Marketing and Kibran Tools have rekindled their, their relationship. And as of the 1st of June, we will be, um, we are now representing Kibran Tools again. Um, and so I, the first thing I wanted to do is really do this webinar and to showcase Ethiopia. It is the most fascinating African destination for me, having worked in the African travel industry for so long and working very closely in Eastern and Southern African countries to then encounter Ethiopia, which was just so different to any other African country I'd been to, was just really, really fascinating in terms of its history, its culture. It is just mind blowing. Um, it's a really interesting mix of for me, kind of African and also very strong kind of Arabian blends. It's just really, really unique. So for those guests who love culture and history, who don't mind um, maybe uh, in terms of accommodation, it doesn't have the, the luxury um, elements that we have elsewhere in Africa, but for those people who can see beyond that and just really appreciate the unique um, history and culture it is the mm. most fascinating destination to visit. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Asifa, um, who is um, MD of Kibran Tours and who is a DMC based in Ethiopia and one that we worked with for many years as um, a partner when we worked for Bali Mountain Lodge. Any fam trips or anything we did, we did with Kibran Tours and then when their rep um, moved back to New Zealand, Asifa asked us to represent them and Kibran Tours is the only DMC that small marketing work with. Um, and that's because we just have worked so closely with Asifa and his team um, previously. So it was a, a, a real honor to be able to take him on as a, as a client. Um, but Asifa, I'm going to hand over to you. And as I mentioned, this webinar is being recorded. So if you have any, um, if you have to make a call or accept a call, then don't worry about it. I'll send you through a copy of the recording. But please also do ask questions. Do write them in the chat box or Q&A box. And we'll be really happy to answer them at the end of the session. So Asifa, over to you. Thank you, Anita. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I say good morning because I'm in Washington, D.C. currently. And um, I would like to take you to this fascinating country, but still very complicated country. And the, Ethiopia is one of the most, the most beautiful country in Africa. And uh, 3,000 3, years of history. But uh, as you may know that we have some uh, sometimes ups and downs due to our uh, political situations. And uh, the last four years has been a very tough years for Ethiopia, especially for our industry because uh, the pandemic, then we have had a civil war in, in Ethiopia, uh, which is uh, over now since October 2022, a ceasefire agreement has been signed uh, between the federal government and the rival group of Tigray. And uh, now Ethiopia is ready to welcome international travelers to uh, to, to 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 visit. So, so after saying that, uh, most of the uh, Ethiopian uh, sites are open for tourism, especially the uh, historical route of Ethiopia in the northern part, and as well as the southern part of uh, the tribal uh, uh, areas. So. Ethiopia is uh, a different uh, country than any other African country as a destination, because uh, people who travel to the rest of Africa visiting mostly safaris and uh, national parks, but Ethiopia is more for historical and cultural uh, destination. For those who have been to Africa and looking for a more exotic and uh, a different experience, so they will come to visit Ethiopia. Ethiopia, is a, a Christian a, a Christian country with 3,000 years of history. And uh, Ethiopia has more UNESCO sites, uh, UNESCO heritage sites than any other African countries. We uh, have uh, registered 14 UNESCO sites uh, uh, in Ethiopia. So this makes Ethiopia a unique country in Africa. So now I'm gonna take you to the Northern part of Ethiopia, uh, which, which is called the historical route of Ethiopia. And then I will take you to the uh, southern part of Ethiopia, and I will give you some highlights about, uh, in general, 
to the uh, the rest of the uh, areas in Ethiopia. So this is a map of Ethiopia. Ethiopia is uh, one of the biggest country in Africa in terms of land and and, and in terms of population as well because we have uh, a population of 100 uh, nearly 120 million uh, population and uh, most of the people lives in 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 the, in the countryside and <clears throat> Ethiopia has the size is uh, four times bigger than the United Kingdom or France and Germany combined together. So Ethiopia is a very huge country. And now I'm taking you to the northern part of Ethiopia. So we start from Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is the capital. And uh, there is about seven, 7 million people lives there. And then that's the gateway for uh, Ethiopia. Any international flights are coming to Addis Ababa, pass, um, to Ethiopia pass through Addis Ababa. And luckily, we have the biggest airline, which is called Ethiopian Airlines, uh, one of the biggest airlines in, in, in the world and the biggest in Africa, uh, which has 150 destinations all over the world. So Ethiopia is really a gateway to Africa. And Addis Ababa is also considered the capital of uh, Africa because African Union is uh, in Ethiopia and European Economic Commission for Africa is in Ethiopia. And there are about 150 uh, embassies in Addis Ababa. So it is considered the third uh, diplomatic city in the world. And uh, Addis Ababa being the third diplomatic city in the world, it is a very peaceful uh, city and, and one of the safest city in, in, in Africa. Then I will take you to Bahardar, Gondar, and to the Aksum area, the Tigray region, and to Lalibala. So Ethiopia is well known for the coffee because the coffee was the, originated from Ethiopia in a place called Kaffa. And uh, uh, the coffee ceremony, uh, daily coffee ceremony activity is very, very important for, for the community. So every day we have uh, this ceremony in the morning, which takes about one hour. And it's really very, very interesting. And it's one of the highlights when we have travelers coming to Ethiopia, everyone like invites uh, to see these uh, ceremonies. And Ethiopia, as I said earlier, it is a very uh, Christian country, as well as we have some Muslims uh, in, in Ethiopia. So 60% of the population is Christian and 35% uh, is Muslim. The rest five percent is uh, pagans uh, or different religions, and um, it, we have our own traditional uh, meal food, which is called injera, and uh, which is one of the most uh, fascinating and 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 and, and uh, very very healthy uh, food. And uh, this is like Ethiopia is a vegan paradise country because mostly we have uh, fasting. Uh, about 240 days a year, it is a fasting in Ethiopia. So most of the people do not eat meat. So we have a vegan uh, option for those who really want to eat vegetarian or vegan. So Ethiopia is a high plateau country, especially to the northern part of Ethiopia. 70% of the African mountains are in Ethiopia. So it makes Ethiopia as a high plateau country. So um, if you travel to the northern part, it's not only to visit the, 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 the historical sites. The landscape is amazing and it's fascinating and it's really, really uh, breathtaking. Uh, so th this makes, and when you go to down to the south, it's to the lowland. So people say visiting Ethiopia, both the south and the north, and one trip to visit two countries, you know. Addis Ababa. Addis Ababa is the capital of uh, Ethiopia. And as I said earlier, there's uh, many diplomats, it's called the diplomatic city and uh, the capital of Africa. And we always recommend people when they come to Addis Ababa to stay at least one day, one full day, because there are some uh, interesting sites to visit Addis Ababa. The uh, National Museum, where we keep the original, uh, uh, the original skeleton of Lucy, Lucy is a 3.5, uh, 3.2 million years old uh, skeleton, which uh, um, which is found in 1974 in Afar area, and uh, this is the first humankind. And and then um, you you visit the uh, ethnographic museum, and we have the biggest open air market, Mercato, which is very very interesting to to see. It. There is a, the, in, when you go to Mercato, you can see the, the spicy market. And, and people say 
whenever you go to Mercato, you can find everything and you can find everyone. So it's very, very interesting. So this is one of the uh, highlights in Addis Ababa. And uh, the uh, accommodation in Addis Ababa, as many as many other many international cities, the Addis Ababa has many, many uh, international chain hotels like the Sheraton, the Radisson Blue, Hilton, the Hyatt Regency, the Marriott, the, the Best Western, all the, the chain hotels are in Addis Ababa. Now, currently about 20 new hotels in Addis Ababa, chain hotels are coming up. So the next year we're gonna have plenty of plenty of uh, hotels. But my favorite one is the Sheraton Hotel, uh, which is the Sheraton, which is called the luxury collection. And that is the best or the Golden Tulip. The Golden Tulip is a small, a small boutique hotel. So for those who look for a, a boutique uh, kinds of hotel, I always recommend the Golden Tulip. Uh, or those who like likes big and luxury uh, hotel, I uh, recommend the Sheraton Hotel. Even though the Hyatt is also very good, but my favorite one is the Sheraton Hotel. Uh, getting to Addis Ababa, <clears throat> I mean, in Ethiopia or Addis Ababa, there's Ethiopian Airlines, which has uh, a daily flight from all over the world almost. So uh, Ethiopian Airlines flies about 150 destinations uh, around the world. And uh, from the UK, we have a flight from Manchester to London, um, from London to Manchester, and from Dublin, from Ireland, and then all major cities of Europe. And in the United States, we have in Washington, uh, New York, uh, Atlanta, so uh, Chicago, and 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 then they flew all over uh, Africa. So Ethiopian Airlines is the biggest airline. Then there is Lufthansa, which is coming to Ethiopia, Emirates, Egypt, Air, Saudi, uh, Turkish Airways, Kenyan Airways uh, fly to Ethiopia on a daily basis. Addis Ababa. Uh, So this is one of the palace. Uh, uh, the so when we have special guests, we always arrange uh, an ex, an uh, exclusive um, visit to the palace. This is one of the oldest uh, palace of Haile Selassie. Currently, the Ethiopian president lives here, and we arrange uh, sometimes uh, when we have VIP people, uh, VIP people to uh, wants to visit or meet even the president. We arrange a special request. The Sharatan Addis, which is a beautiful hotel. So now we are going to the northern part of Ethiopia. The northern part of Ethiopia, or uh, the historical route of uh, Ethiopia, which is going to through Bahardar, Gondar, Semi Mountain National Park, Aksum, Tigray, and Lalibala. So to do this, uh, you need a minimum of one week and a maximum of 14 days. So between one week and 14 days. So for those who, who feel like uh, in, uh, internally by um, domestic flight and 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 do the shorter trip for uh, one week is enough but someone if you want to, to drive from place to place but at least we need uh, 14 days uh in the country so Addis Ababa now we are we are going to Bahardar Bahardar is the uh, source of the Nile River and it is on the bank of Lake Tana and the Lake Tana is the biggest lake in Ethiopia. And uh, there are many, many monastery churches, about 30 islands and 20 of them with the monastery churches dated on the 14th century. And then from here, uh, we will go to Gondar. Gondar is the castle city. And, and then we'll, we'll go to the Simeon Mountain National Park. We This is like our, our biggest national park, one of our biggest national park. We don't have big national parks in Ethiopia and we don't sell Ethiopia as a, uh, safari destination, but uh, our our national parks has a unique uh, unique uh, endemic animals like the uh, red-chested chilada uh, monkey and uh, the 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 semen fox and uh, the walia and the ibex, and then we go to Aksum, where uh, where the Aksum it is very famous for this is like the where our history begins, and this is uh, the place where. We see also the uh, palace of Queen of Sheba and uh, the, the the church, the famous church where we keep the original Ark of the Covenant. And from here, we can go to the um, uh, the uh, Makale, 
passing through the Tigray, uh, uh, Tigray churches and, and, and the, the Tigray Valley, which is very, very interesting. And the Garalta area, we have very beautiful, beautiful landscape. And from Makale to Lalibala, and Lalibala is uh, known for uh, the 11 Rokun churches and, and, and some of them underground churches and monolithic churches, and which is built in a unique stone and then fly back to Addis Ababa. Then we'll continue to, to, to the south. So Bahardar, as I said earlier, Bahardar is like um, the Palm City and a beautiful a small city. And uh, the main attraction there are like the Blue Nile Falls and the monasteries of Lake Tana. And we recommend about two days to stay there because it's a really beautiful city and um, to, 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 to sail on the boat and going to visit the monastery churches on the end of the 14th century and then to visit the Blue Nile Falls. And there also there is a, a, a beautiful market as well as the Palace of Haile Selassie, which is very interesting. And the best place to stay in Bahardar is the Kuriftu Resort and the Spa and the Blue Nile Hotel. Here, there are other hotels are coming up in, in, this, in this area. The Radisson Blue is coming and, and some other hotels are the Hilton is uh, under construction. But my favorite one is when people come to Ethiopia, I would prefer to use a local accommodation than the international chain. So I prefer to use the like the Kuriftu, Zavanti Resort and, 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 and some other smaller abayment lodge. And uh, to Bahardar, there are about uh, four or five flights a day. And there, before COVID, there was about 14 flights a day, 14 flights a day. But now about five, six flights a day, and, and, and it's increasing uh, slowly. And uh, this is like uh, one of the most beautiful city in, in Ethiopia. Not because of I was born there, but it's a really a beautiful uh, city. This is the Blue Nile Falls, one of the attractions. The monastery church, this is a fresco in the one of the monastery church in the 14th century. And, and going there, like the monasteries are like uh, forests and a lot of coffee plantations there. And it's really very, very interesting. And uh, going by boat there and then making a small walk to visit the, the churches. This is the Kurifto Resort. Gwonder. So Gwonder is uh, considered like the Camelot of Africa because there are uh, castles of, uh, dozens of castles, uh, which is built on the 16th century. And uh, the Gondor uh, people, when they visit Gondor, they say they feel that they are in a small village in Portugal or Spain than in Africa, because there are many, many castles uh, built in the 16th century. And, uh, and it's like the more uh, loved city by the Italians. I don't know why. The Italians, they really love Gondor and we have had many, many Italians used to live in Gondor area. And uh, in Gondor, uh, there is uh, the attraction of the, uh, the castle compound and the Fasilida school and, and, and the Brabrahan Selassie, which is the, uh, the 12th century church. And, and of course, uh, near, near to Gondor, there is a village, which is the Falasha village. Falasha is a Jewish, Ethiopian Jewish. And that is like Ethiopian Jewish, so we are used to live uh, nearby uh, Gondor and the uh, Simeon Mountains and Aksum area, the mountain areas uh, before they were airlifted in the 1991 uh, and uh, 90. Uh, the last operation was done in 2006, and my company was uh, part of the operation. Uh, and this is a really a very interesting site to, to, to visit. And in Gwonder, there are new hotels came up, like the Gwonder Hill Resort, which is a very beautiful resort with 70 rooms. And it's on top of the small hill, and you can see the whole city, including the castle compound. And it's really, really a very, very interesting uh, resort. And of course, there is also the Milo College. The Milo College is uh, near to the airport, and, and it's a small uh, Tukul-style hotel uh, lodge, and, and it's very, very good. The, there, are, there are about uh, five, six flights again here into Gondor, daily from Addis Ababa or from, the, from Gondor to Lalibala and Aksum as well, but currently to Aksum, uh, the airport is not uh, operational. There is no flight from Gondor to Aksum, but to Lalibala and Bar, um, to Addis Ababa, uh, there are uh, four or five flights a day. But from Bahardar to Gondor, it's only 180 kilometers and we, we, 
it doesn't we don't recommend to fly from Bahardar to Gwendar. It's just a drive. The drive from Bahardar to Gwendar is really uh, very nice because it's you pass through the mountainous area and the landscape is uh, beautiful. One of the castle in Gondor. Okay, Gondor is also known for the festivals, the Tumkat festival, uh, which is very, very one of the most important festival in Ethiopia, which is called Epiphany, which is uh, held on the 18th uh, and the 19th of January every year, except when there's a leap year, which will be 19th and 20th of January. And this is the best place to celebrate the uh, uh, Epiphany festival. So thousands of thousands of people comes to Gondor to celebrate uh, this, and it's one of the most colorful festival. This is the compound of the castle. Simeon Mountain, the Simeon Mountain National Park is one of the uh, most fascinating uh, sites in Ethiopia. And this is like uh, 4,519 meters above the sea level. And uh, this is the highest mountain in Ethiopia. And when you go there, there is a chain of mountains as far as I can see. And it's really one of the most breathtaking places. And, and it's really a very interesting area. And here you can see the Chilada baboon, the monkey, and uh, also the uh, wali ibex and, 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 and the simian fox. The simian fox is the endemic uh, fox uh, in Ethiopia and the Jalada Babun as well, the endemic uh, animal uh, in, in Ethiopia. This is the Simeon Mountain, the Jalada Babun. Simeon Mountain. This is Simeon Mountain, there are two lodges. One of the lodges is the uh, um, Lima Limo Lodge. And the second one is the uh, Simeon Mountain Lodge. <clears throat> so Lima Limo Lodge is my favorite one. And I always recommend people to stay in Lima Limo Lodge. But the Simeon, the Simeon Lodge also is good uh, being in, inside the park. But uh, we as Kebran, we, are, uh, <clears throat> we took a land inside the park and we start to do our, uh, our own lodge. Uh, so we'll, we'll send more information uh, about the progress, uh, we started before COVID, but after COVID, uh, uh, we were had the, the war. We stopped it, and now again we start uh, rebuilding. So we'll we'll set uh, we'll set a time frame, and we'll uh, we'll we'll distribute some information via um, the African Hub or uh, small world market. Aksum, Aksum is like the one of the most historical place in Ethiopia, and. Um, uh, it is like uh, the pre-Christian uh, for the three thousand years uh, history, a pre-Christian and 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 the famous place where we keep the original Ark of the Covenant, where that is the the the, the place where Queen of Sheba and people when we say Queen of Sheba they confuse with uh, Yemen and so on, but Queen of Sheba was from Ethiopia and uh, passing uh, when she go to visit. King Solomon passed through uh, Yemen, and in Yemen also she built some 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 palaces. So uh, she, then she went to Israel. So that some people say, "Oh, yeah, Queen of Sheba is from Yemen," but Queen of Sheba is from Ethiopia, and <clears throat> the Ark of the Covenant. Uh, that's a very long because I, it's a long history to to explain to you how the Ark of the Covenant came because we have only twenty minutes, thirty minutes. And uh, so the Ark of the Covenant is, uh, if you know, if you wanted to know um, uh, good um, information about the Ark of the Covenant, please read a book called The Sign and the Seal, which is written by Graham Hancock. And it's very, very interesting, a book that can give you uh, more information. So this is the Obelisk of Aksum. And then the Garalta area, the Tigray Garalta area is one of the most fascinating area, a beautiful landscape. And we, I really love, this is one of the highlights uh, after Semen for me, which is really very, very interesting. Lalibala. Lalibala is, uh, the people say, the, the, the people say it looks like Machu Picchu. Um, I say, yeah, it looks, but, Lalibala is always alive. 
every morning people go there to pray and we always ask our guests to come and to be participate there even if they are not religious but to see it's once a lifetime and it's really beautiful and uh it's considered the eighth wonder of the world uh like the the, the beta georg is one of the most fascinating church in the world it has been excavated from the top to down and 90 degree accurate and and it is like on the 12th century and it's really one of the most fascinating uh site in ethiopia so lalibola is also famous for uh a religious festival uh for the ethiopian christmas ethiopian christmas is on the 6th or the 7th of july um, i'm sorry january the 6th of January. So uh, most of it is the 6th of January, but when there is a leap year, it's going to be 7th of January. And it's one of the most uh, interesting uh, celebration to attend. Lalibala. Now I'm, I'm, I'm taking you to, down to the south. The south is more for uh, a tribal visit and and, and the, the south is more uh, to, to visit 50 different tribes are together here, 50 different tribes, and, and it's more uh, for cultural trips. So the south, the, the, the key attraction of the, the tribes, the, 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 the Karo, the Mursi, the Hammer, and the Benna, different, 50 different uh, tribes. And of course, there is a Mago National Park, which is very interesting to see. You can have a chance to see some uh, elephants there and some lions, but not. we don't have that that much to say, oh, we're going to take you as a, a national park. But on, on the way past, when you go to visit uh, the, the tribes, you can see those uh, animals like the, 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 the elephant, if you go to Mago and, and lions. And the accommodation there, like uh, the, the accommodation in the Omo Valley is very, very, uh, very, very um, standard. And, and, and uh, the only accommodation that we always recommend is the oh, Lale Camp, the Lale Camp, which has eight uh, tents, uh, fixed tents, and it's really very beautiful. Otherwise, uh, it's possible to use also the um, in in Murule some of the lodges. This is the Kara tribe, the Mursi tribe. The Mursi tribe are known to put the plate on their lip because that is their like uh, as people put the earring. This is like to show their beautiness. This is during the uh, festival. This is the Omo River, the Lale Camp, and some of the lodges in Arbam, I mean, some of the hotel in Arbaminj. The Bali Mountain National Park. The Bali Mountain National Park is the second highest mountain in Ethiopia, and it's one of, uh, one of the most uh, interesting places in Ethiopia. And uh, uh, we always recommend to go there, uh, to combine Semien and, uh, and Bali, and, and here, you are hundred percent guaranteed to see the Semen fox, and so this is a place for people who really loves birding. This is a bird paradise place, and there are about two hundred eighty-seven species of birds, and it's really very very interesting area for fauna and flora. And uh, the Sanate Plateau, which is very very interesting, so uh, we always recommend to stay two three days there, and uh, there is a very beautiful lodge. The Bali Mountain Lodge. This is the Fox, the Bali Mountain Lodge. And then to the east part, the eastern part of uh, Ethiopia, the Harar. Harar is mostly uh, dominated by Muslims, and um, and it is an eastern part. And this is a beautiful walled city. And uh, it, people, when they go to the, the center of Harar, they feel that they are in Madina, in Marrakesh, and it's really beautiful and it's well known for it is a beautiful colorful market and the man who is feeding the hyenas and 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 uh and uh it is the, the 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 chat market the chat is like the green leaf that people chewing it that is a very very famous uh, market to visit and of course the mosques and the rainbow house which is very famous uh, for horror 
Harar and Ridwan. And then uh, from Harar, we go to the hottest place on the planet, the, which is minus 160 below the sea level. It can reach to 50 uh, degrees centigrade. And, and uh, this is one of the most fascinating and, and the amazing place where you can see salt lakes and sulfurs and, and, and active volcanoes. And the Danakil Depression is it's a really uh, beautiful place to visit. This is the Danakil Depression. And mostly people who do it with helicopter a more uh, more advantage to see beyond the, the Nikel. And this is the this is the uh, Erta Ale, the active volcano. So this is all uh, this is it. And um, thank you very much. And I'm I <clears throat> I really appreciate for your participation. I see that there is a lot of people participating in this webinar. And uh, I really um, uh, thank you. And please be our uh, our voice for Ethiopia because tourism is a very uh, important industry for our country. And uh, most of the people, especially in the northern and southern part of Ethiopia, uh, has depend on tourism. So uh, we we know that there are some there was some problems, but now things are changed, and we are ready to welcome uh every every traveler to ethiopia thank you very much i really appreciate it. thanks asfa thank you so much for bringing um what is such a fascinating destination to life um we have a question from pretty who has asked how do you get from simeon to axum um and one question i wanted to ask is Previously, when we worked, um, when we visited Ethiopia, Ethiopian Airlines, if you book the international flights, you get your internal flights uh, hugely discounted. Is the Ethiopian Airlines network still as kind of expansive as it used to be pre-COVID? And also, are they still running that, that offer? Because presumably, in answer to Preeti's um, question, to get from Simeon to Axum, the best way is actually to fly on Ethiopian Airlines. Is that correct? Yeah, so uh, Ethiopian Airlines is flying uh, due to the war. Uh, we have had a problem in the airport Aksum. Aksum airport has been destroyed and they are working on it. But there is another airport nearby Aksum, which is uh, Shire, which is 100 uh, kilometers from uh, Aksum. So people fly can fly to Shire, not from Gondar, but from Addis Ababa, and, uh, or driving from uh, the Simen to Aksum. It is about six hours driving. Okay, thank you for that. Um, Jolise has asked, what is the average night rate for accommodation, tours, flight, et cetera, in US dollars, um, higher end luxury? It depends, uh, it depends. Uh, like if you use uh, charter flights and, and so on, it's, it, it is a worry, but uh, depend on, if you send us a, a request, we'll, we'll send you an average per night. So, so what, it, 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 yeah, Jolice, actually, just in answer to that as well, what's slightly different about Ethiopia is that you really need to have a guide the whole way through because you are, um, everywhere you go, it's just unbelievable in terms of the, the history and the culture. And so what we normally do with our Kibran tours itineraries is you would be hosted by a guide the whole way through. Now, obviously, that is what is, you know, pushes the prices up slightly. Um, the actual internal, the internal network in terms of flights and the accommodation isn't so expensive. Um, but obviously having a, a you know, personal guide does make it a bit more expensive, but it's absolutely critical because otherwise you'd just miss, you'd never be able to understand and absorb all the information there is um, through out of Ethiopia without that, that private guide. So what would be good actually, Asper, and what we can maybe work on is maybe putting together some sample itineraries, um, so maybe like a 10 nights, 10 nights trip, which is maybe in the north, the cultural north, and maybe like a 14 night trip, which is maybe including the Omo Valley as well. Um, because as you can see from Asfa's presentation, Ethiopia's destination is so varied um, in terms of its experience, and it's you know it's a big destination. So you really do need kind of at least two weeks to to explore it comprehensively. But we'll work on putting together some stress itineraries so you can get an idea um, of what you can see and experience. And I, with accommodation, as I said at the beginning, it is more simple. It is more basic compared to some of the luxury properties in eastern southern Africa. Your clients have got to, you know, um, be prepared to 
not have that same same level of combination but in terms of the cultural experience and the insights it's just mind-blowing so it's got to be for the right kind of client the more adventurous client that actually is there for the kind of the culture rather than the luxury having said that what's very exciting is with Kibran tours um working on their new property in the Simeon mountains um that's going to be amazing because that's going to bring the standard of accommodation in Ethiopia up substantially um so that is the challenge almost for us is trying to create an itinerary that has a consistent level of accommodation which is just you know it's, it's harder to achieve in Ethiopia because the accommodation just isn't at the same level as elsewhere in Africa but um it's so worth it because the, for the cultural and kind of historical experience it's it's just really kind of super it, it, it's it's absolutely incredible but also what's so lovely is um what I love about going to Ethiopia is actually the Ethiopians really really appreciate their history so when you go to Gondar and you see the castles you are there with lots of Ethiopians coming out on Sunday, exploring the castles, appreciating it, which is quite rare. Like it makes you realize that you don't really see that often in other parts of Africa. You know, they're really, really appreciating their history because Ethiopia is the only country that has never been colonized. It's been occupied twice by Italy, but it doesn't have the kind of, I suppose, the slightly raw history of colonization that other countries do in Africa. So the Ethiopians are incredibly proud of their history, incredibly proud of their beautiful historical artifacts and buildings and it's really really celebrated throughout the destination and it's it's lovely to see that um so i think those are all the questions we have so far yeah um we'll definitely work on a seven we're working on a seven ten and fourteen night package um and we'll send it through to you to you as the follow-up as well um i think those are all the questions we've uh answered and um, second is any more no i think that's it so thank you so much for joining us this afternoon do let me know if you've got any more questions um and you can always email myself or ask for we will be sending a follow-up uh, with all the information and um yeah but also on the 8th of august we're also through the africa hub are doing a introduction to Ethiopia presentation with Asfa again. So if you want your team to join us on that one, then you know please register for that. But Asfa, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone. Afternoon. Thank you, Anita. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank Thanks you. so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye.